Hello and welcome to Rule Breaker. Today we're going to take a look at the Clan of Sar. Um, now that we have the Prophecy of Kings expansion for Twilight Imperium, um, we're going to focus entirely on their mechs and leaders uh, that came in the box and see what changes that brings to their playstyle in the game. Um, so without further ado, let's go straight in. Let's have a look at them. Their agent is called Captain Mendoza. Uh, they have a uh, commander called Raul Sarig. Uh, they have a hero, Gurno Aguro. Let's try to say that <laughs> 10 times in a row. And then they have a mech called Scavenger Zeta. All right, McBain's nemesis, Captain Mendoza here, um, captain of the 5th fleet. Uh, he is the agent and he has the text after a player activates a system you may exhaust this card to increase the move value of one of that player's ships to match the move value of the ship on the game board that has the highest move value um, very uh, clumsily worded but essentially what that does is um, allows one ship to become the fastest ship on the board um, equaling the current fastest um, pretty much the highest value ships in the game are move three and um, so kind of what you're saying there um, is you're allowing um, a ship that normally moves one to move either two or three it's probably going to be two at the start of the game and it's probably going to be three later into the game um, and it's an exhaust ability so it's um, it's something that you can only do once per round so once it's done you flip it over it's exhausted it's not available anymore and um, for the rest of the round and it'll be available in the later round. Um, it does say a player, so it doesn't have to be you. You can help somebody out, you can give somebody a boost. Um, you can help uh, somebody reach somewhere where you want them to go to do some damage. Um, or it can be yourself, of course. Um, boosting maybe one of your floating factories, for example, which are the SARS um, space docks that can move uh, and produce like lots of stuff wherever they go. Um, so lots of flexibility there. Um, Decent enough agent, I think pretty fun. It definitely enhances their their maneuverability, which is something that they want. So a uh, useful agent for the Clan of Sar. Um, their commander, Raul Sarig, uh, unlocks when you have three space docks on the game board. Um, and again, Floating Factory is the version of space dock for the Clan of Sar. They're gonna want those out there. They move, they have capacity, they build super quickly, um, especially when you've got the upgraded version, the Floating Factory 2 here. Um, I think you're gonna have those three space docks out relatively quickly, um, as long as you're you know, inclined to take the construction strategy card or have other ways of getting the space docks down. Um, this will be flipped over relatively quickly. And when you do, it has the text. When you produce fighters or infantry, you may place each of those units at any of your space docks that are not blockaded. So this is an always on ability, okay? It's not an exhaust thing like the agent. Um, and essentially when you get to the production phase um, of, of your turn, and when you're producing either fire, fighters or infantry, it doesn't even have to be the system that you activated with your token. It can be any of the ones that have um, your floating factory space dock flying around there, um, which is brilliant. Um, normally, um, the Clannasar can't have space docks that are blockaded because they are destroyed, as uh, mentioned on their floating factory too. But that must just be a clarification in case there's an edge case in the rules um, to stop you from getting around it in some way um, but that's what the commander is all about and moving on to their uh, hero Gurno Aguero um, who unlocks after you score three objectives pretty standard hero stuff uh, flips over and becomes Armageddon Relay the Lay of Lysis uh, which is an action uh, choose one system that is adjacent to one of your space docks destroy all other players infantry and fighters in that system then purge this card so uh, it's a once per game action once you've done it it's gone um this is an action you can do as your turn so instead of uh, using one of your tokens to fly to a system or instead of playing an action card or doing a strategy action you can do this instead um so destroying all the infantry and fighters in a system very situational i think maybe um if someone's hunkered down on mechatol rex and has a whole lot of uh, infantry you can use this to get rid of them ahead of, ahead of time and um, you'll have people asking you to help them with that maybe at some stage that's uh, maybe a good negotiation tactic 
Um, I think uh, this is not one of the strongest heroes. I think that's probably because Clan of Star are regarded as one of the most powerful factions in the game, and this might be a way of kind of dragging them down uh, to everybody else's level a little bit now that they've got new toys to play with. Um, it's not a bad thing, like, don't get me wrong, destroying all of the fighters in the system means that your opponent's ships that are remaining are um, likely to be uh, sitting ducks, really, um, particularly if they're not able to reinforce before your next turn. Um, and that is the thing about this, it, because it's an action, it's the only thing you're going to do on that turn, you're going to have to wait till your next turn to capitalize on it if you are planning on um, doing a lot of damage or conquering a, plan a system um, and some planets. So you're going to have to be a bit patient with this one. So Armageddon Relay, um, I'm not going to say underwhelming, it definitely has a lot of use, but compared to some of the other heroes in the game, like the Embers one for example, um, uh, which destroys an entire system. This only destroys infantry and fighters, so it's objectively, comparatively weaker than that, right? So, um, that's the Clan of Sar. Not their main thing by any means, but definitely something useful um, for them to do in the game. Um, and moving on to their mech, which uh, has two cost, six combat and sustained damage, pretty standard. Um, it has a deploy ability, which is after you gain control of a planet, you may spend one trade good to place one mech on that planet. Uh, so instead of paying the two or having to produce it and carry it along with a carrier or something with capacity, um, this is just a way of getting them down. Um, easier and cheaper so one trade good specifically a trade good not uh, resources on planets um, in order to get them in and that's it that's all they have um, for the mech it's again pretty bog standard um, in sort of ground units not doing anything um, massively exciting and again I think as you can see from the fact that they don't have anything in the Twilight Imperium Codex that was released either recently it's just Prophecy of King stuff um, there's nothing huge here um, being able to place your things in different places you can kind of do a bit of that with chaos mapping already when you um, start your turn um, and the the hero is not amazing the mech is pretty standard and their agent is it's okay it's good um, so I think again just to reiterate I think they're they're one of the strongest factions in the game and I think that the the relatively um, like not as not as devastatingly exciting uh, stuff that they've gotten in Prophecy of Kings is maybe to balance things out a little bit. And that's totally fair enough. It's going to make for a better game. Um, and that's really it. That's all they've got here. Um, so this has been Rule Breaker, one of the shorter videos. Um, hopefully you enjoyed it. I know I did. Um, thanks for watching and come back for the rest of the series. We'll see you soon. And thank you.